In John chapter number 9, we'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, And as Jesus passed by, boy, I'm glad he passed by my way one day. Hmm? And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good choir singing. Thank you for the good special singing. Lord, you truly are worthy to be blessed regardless of our circumstances. God, thank you for the good reports from the good services over at the jail. God, thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for being a good God. Now, I pray for the next few minutes you to rest our attention. I pray that you'd be magnified and high and lifted up. I pray you'd speak to our hearts. I pray you'd challenge us from the Word of God. I pray that, Lord, you would uh, certainly make the Word of God clear and make it uh, understandable. And, God, I certainly do pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. Now, Lord, we do ask that, Lord, if there be any amongst us who are hurting this morning, they'd find help in a balm of Gilead from the Lord. I pray if there be anybody who's lost, that today would be the day of their salvation. I pray for every need of every heart, and I pray your will would be manifested to all of us, and that, God, we'd be found in the center of thy will. And now, Father, get glory to your name. Help us this day, we pray, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to several things from this text. I want you to notice, first of all, the predicament. We find in verse number 1 that Jesus passes by and he sees a man that's blind from his birth. This man had a condition that he's had all his life. It's a condition that he can't change uh, no matter how hard he tries. Can I say that you and I was born with a condition? We were blind to spiritual things. In all of our efforts, in all of our wisdom, in all of our works, we couldn't have changed it. But when Jesus passes by, things can change. So we see the predicament. I want you to notice the prejudice. Look in verse number 2. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And that just like us. We'll see somebody and we want to prejudge them. Mm, that's what prejudice means. You know, we prejudge people by their color. We prejudge, uh, prejudge people by the way they look, uh, 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 by where they live, or by what we perceive we think we know about them. Uh, isn't it amazing that people's first impression of somebody is usually the lasting impression? That'd been sad in this part, because these guys knew him as the blind man, but if you read the rest of the story, he don't stay blind much longer. Mm. Uh, they prejudged this man's condition, and they thought it was a result of sin. Mm. And can I say, it doesn't matter what anybody looks like when they come through those doors. It's not important about where they've been and what their situation is, what's important about it is getting them to Jesus. Mm? And God help us not to prejudge people. Mm? If we'd done that, we'd never let Eddie Wilson join the church. huh? huh? Mm? But we see prejudice. We see the predicament. But notice the providence. Look at verse number 3. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Can I say the Lord allowed this man to be born blind so the Lord could do a great work in his life? Can I say a lot of times the Lord allows things to happen in our lives so he can show how great he is? Hmm? Aren't you glad for the providence of God? Aren't you glad that he's not limited by time or space? Uh, aren't you glad there's nothing impossible with God? He still is almighty. And I bless the Lord for that. Now notice his prediction. Look at verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. 
The Lord makes a prediction. He says there's coming a period, a time, when no man can work. Hmm? And then notice the phenomena. Look down at verse 6. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Now that's not very sanitary in our eyes, but, you know, it is holy spit. It is from the Lord, huh? Uh, verse 7, And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way therefore, and washed, and came seen. And the Lord opened his blinded eyes. What a blessing. Hmm? Uh, what a blessing to know that uh, in spite of all the efforts of man, nothing could be done to help this fellow. But it just took one little instant with the Lord, and this man's life's changed for the rest of his life. Huh? Can I say? When the Lord saved me in March of 1974, it just took a little bit of time of me coming face to face with who I am, face to face with who He is. And when I uh, 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 turned from my sin and, and asked the Lord to save me, He saved me and changed my life. No wonder John Newton wrote, uh, I once was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. I'm interested in verse number 4 on this New Year's Day. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. The Lord is saying, we better put a priority on our time. And I want to preach on that thought for the next few minutes, on prioritizing in the new year. We've only got so much time. We only have so many minutes, so many seconds, so many hours, so many days. But unfortunately, we spend a lot of the, the time God has allotted us with things and on things that don't even really matter. So we need to learn to prioritize our time in the new year. Can I say in 2023, there's some things that there should be an emphasis on. Some things that our time should be consumed with. Can I say, first of all, the emphasis ought to be placed on sinners. Hmm? We ought to place much emphasis of our time on sinners. We spend a lot of our time on ourselves, uh, but it's about time we start looking around uh, and realize folks are not ready to meet the Lord. Uh, folks are going to spend eternity in a devil's hell. Uh, they don't have to. The Lord Jesus has paid for their sin, uh, and the Lord has left us here to be a beacon to them, uh, uh, to be a lifeline to them, uh, uh, to warn them, uh, 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 and to tell them the good news of the gospel. They don't have to go to hell. Uh, they can be saved from their sins. Uh, their lives can be changed just like this blind man's life was changed. Uh, can I say uh, uh, the emphasis of our time... Uh, for sinners ought to be placed first of all in prayer. We need to pray for sinners. Right. Need to pray God would open their eyes. Yeah. Need to pray that God would show them they're lost. Uh, you know why sinners uh, still sin? They don't know that uh, they're lost. Yeah. Or if they know that their life's a mess, they don't know where they can find some help. Mm. This fellow knew he's blind. Yeah. And he just needed to get to Jesus. We need to pray for sinners that God would open their eyes to the fact they need a Savior. Can I say, not only should we pray for them, we need to proselyte them. That's a big fancy biblical word, which means we ought to go after them. We ought to go let them know Jesus loves them. Jesus died for them. Jesus is willing to save them. Uh, 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 we ought to let them know, hey, we've got a church where you can come uh, and you're not going to be judged because of your life. Uh, you can come and hear the gospel. Uh, you can come uh, and be loved and be uh, welcomed with open arms. We need to go after them. You say, preach, why we need to go after them? Because they're not knocking our doors down to get in here. Mm. Uh, they might if they knew what we had to offer them. So how do they know? How are they going to hear except there be a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? And we all have a general call from God to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We need to just go tell them, say, Preacher, I'm not real good at talking about the Lord or talking. Just take a bunch of them tracks and just start handing them to people. Hmm? Uh, 
We need to prophesy them. We need to pray for them. Then we need to point them to Jesus. No, just point them to Him. We don't need to point them to us. We can't help them. But we can point them to the one who can. And His name is Jesus. We much emphasis and prioritizing our time for this new year needs to be on sinners. Can I say, secondly, we need to prioritize our time. The much emphasis needs to be placed on our standing with the Lord. Yeah. Hmm? Now, we all have an innate ability as human be beings. We think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Hmm? You know, there's more money spent in this world, in, in America, on cosmetics and workout stuff and all that because we place so much emphasis on us and our flesh, and how we look, and how we smell, and how uh, we give off an appearance to other people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about our standing with the Lord. I'm not talking about the impression you give to everybody else. I'm talking about what God knows about you. Hmm? Uh, we need to ask ourselves a question. Are we truly right with God? Now, most of the time, Brother Josh, when we ask that question, we base our standing with God on somebody else. And we'll never find the best Christian in the church house. We'll usually find somebody like Mary or Marcy. Because <laughs> compared to them, we're doing pretty good. Huh? <laughs> Phil said, that's good preaching right there. That's what he said. Huh? Huh? You know, we... We can fit in that pew right there. Uh, let's see, when we measure ourselves up to the Lord Jesus, are we right? Uh, is the Lord pleased with our life? Is the Lord's touch on our life? Hmm? How's our prayer life? How's our Bible reading, our Bible memorizing? How's our burden for sinners? And how many sinners have we invited to church? Huh? How much time have we spent praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ rather than talking about our brothers and sisters in Christ? Huh? When you start breaking it down like that, it gets real quiet, doesn't it? Amen. We're all excited when we're comparing ourselves to Mary and Marcy over there. M&Ms, huh? But when we get to looking at biblical Christianity, I mean, when we get to looking at the epistles of Paul, when he said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, uh, how much filthy stuff has come out of our mouth? Say, preacher, I don't cuss. I'm not talking about that. If you mention Joe Biden, that's pretty filthy. Uh, seriously. What kind of Christians would we be if we spent as much time in the Bible as we do thinking about politics or thinking about sports or thinking about things that really do not profit? Mm -mm. Hey, I, 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 I keep up with politics because I want to know when they're lying to me. Here's how to know when they're lying to you. Every time they open their mouth. Uh, I keep up with sports too. Some of it. Some of it. I, I, I quit following sports where they, they, they kneel during the national anthem. I don't watch that. Hmm? Uh, we, had, we had men and women give their lives that we can have the freedoms we have. I still believe there's something special about old glory. I still think it's important to honor our veterans. I still think it's important to honor America. Huh? I still think the bald eagle means something in America. Are you listening? Uh and when you get somebody that's a spoiled brat making millions of dollars that can't reverence the fact that they they get to play the sport they're playing because somebody went to a beach and gave their life, you know, in World War II, and they'll bow and take a knee at the flag, I think we ought to take them out and shoot them is what I think, huh? Uh, you say, Brother Doug, you ought to be president. You don't want me president. I promise you that. And I wouldn't last about 10 minutes. They'd, they'd take me out and shoot me, huh? But I, I'm here to tell you. We spend so much time focusing on a bunch of junk. How much time do we focus on Him? How much do you meditate on the Lord and on the Word of the Lord? How, how much do you sing praise and from your heart unto the Lord throughout the day? How much attention does He really get with our lives? I'm talking about 
our standing with him. Are we right? Hmm. Hmm. I like it when it gets quiet. That means somebody's thinking about something. Hmm. I'm talking about our standing with him. How much do we rule and reign over our flesh? Revelation 1 6 tells us the Lord hath now made us kings and priests. Hmm? Listen, I'm not going to be a king and priest in Christ. I am a king and priest in Christ. He made me a priest to where I don't have to go to some earthly priest to get God's attention. I can go right to him. He's my advocate. He's my intercessor, uh, and he made me a priest that I can do uh, everything that I need to do spiritually to be right with him. Amen. But he also made me a king to rule and reign over my flesh. Hmm? My flesh does not have to have dominion over me. If I put enough of the things of God in me, the spiritual man will rule over my flesh. And I wonder how my standing is with God. How good of a job am I ruling today? Hmm? Now, some of you fellows do a pretty good job ruling to your wife. Tells you something different. Boy, that really hit real well. Uh, the truth of the matter is, Brother Ray, the, the husband's the head of the house, but the wife's the neck that turns the head. And a lot of fellows got to get permission from their wife before they can do anything. Hmm? Thank you, Brother James. Now you know why he's not married. The reality is there's a lot of things we allow to overrule our flesh. And God help us with our standing with God. Are we right with Him? Are we ruling over our flesh? Let me ask you this. Are we ready for His return? You do know He's coming back. He promised to. And I know what a lot of people say, well, I've, I've heard that all my life. That doesn't change the fact he's coming. And I promise you this, he's nearer to coming now than he was yesterday. Mm -hmm. But can I help you with something? The reason I follow up with what's going on in this world is because I want to know what's going on in the Bible. And can I say everything that's going on in this world is let me know that everything that has to be fulfilled has been fulfilled. And can I say, COVID was the test run for the Antichrist. There's going to be a one world government. There's going to be a one world uh, 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 economic system. There's going to be a one world religion when the Antichrist takes over. And can I say that the church uh, is raptured out of here before the Antichrist takes over? If COVID was a trial run, I don't know if you've heard this, but right now China's got the worst outbreak of COVID than they ever had. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what they're pumping out right now. I just heard yesterday, y'all know Brother Wheeler. Brother Wheeler sent me a documentary, and I watched it yesterday. I didn't realize this, but in 2016, Bill Gates had a summit with the Gates Foundation over in Europe. He invited a lot of people that were the principals in the COVID thing. And they started telling back then that there was going to be a pandemic. And if you watch the video, they lay it out verbatim what was going to happen. And guess what had happened? Grouchy Fauci told Trump before he went into office in 2017, you're going to face a pandemic in while you're president. Hmm? How did they all know that? Were they so smart that they could see the future? No, they orchestrated it. Now, I said all that, say this, you know what? Bill Gates has done in the last month he's had another summit you know what he announced in this summit and if you want the link I'll give you the video you can watch it for yourself you can see it come out of their own mouths and he said this the next one's coming in 2025 and it's going to be worse than the last one now whether or not you realize that COVID wasn't about the virus there's always a virus what amazed me we got COVID we didn't have flu now the, a, a lot of the truth came out on COVID, so now this fall it wasn't COVID. We got the flu back. There's always a virus. Hmm? Can I help you with something? There's no cure for viruses. They have to run their course. 
Hmm? And can I say the most effective course is natural herd immunity. The more you're out in the elements, the more uh, antibodies you build up in your body to resist it. So in COVID, they put us all in our own homes so you could not resist it. And then they made you take the jab, and what they're finding out the jab's doing now is it's causing strokes, blood clots, all kinds of things in young people. Why do you think there was such a push to get your children vaccinated? Do you know what Bill Gates, he's not a scientist. He was a computer software guy. That's where he made his money. Why are we taking medical advice from him? Do you know what he has been pushing for for over a decade? Population control. Say we got too many people who can't feed the world. Not when you're paying farmers not to grow food. What I'm saying is if the next one's coming in 2025, that might be when the Antichrist takes over. The Lord may be taking the church out in 2023. Are you ready? Because before the Antichrist really kicks in, the first three and a half years, he just gets everything set up. Then total anarchy happens. Huh? We're gone. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Are you ready? So preach, I don't like hearing all that kind of stuff. That's why I'm preaching it. I'm not an ear tickler. I'm a truth teller. And the Lord's coming back. I don't know what's all going to transpire. I don't know what a day brings forth any more than you do. I'm just asking, are you ready? He's coming. And he's coming soon. Hmm? Talk about prioritizing in 2023. Well, if I wasn't saved, I'd make sure I got saved today. Uh, if I'm saved and I'm not really right with God, I'd get right today. Mm. Uh, listen, there ought to be an emphasis on sinners. There ought to be an emphasis on our standing with God. There ought to be an emphasis on our service for God. Let me ask you a couple questions. How involved are you and I? Are we involved enough in the work of God? It amazes me, Brother Bob, how much time people got for everything but God. I got announced six months in advance we're going to have a revival meeting. As a preacher, I, 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 I got the kids' schedule, got this schedule, got that schedule, got this schedule. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I can make it. No, you choose not to make it. Yeah. Now, it's one thing if you're providentially hindered. If you work a job, you're on second shift, and you can't get off to work, well, that's one thing. It's another thing if you let everything else get in the way. Hmm? I remember a time... Some of you remember this. We used to have a revival meeting about every four or six weeks. Matter of fact, if we didn't have one every six weeks, Frank Stinson was knocking on my door. Preacher, when's the next revival meeting? Now I've got to let you know six months in advance so you can work it in your schedule. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, how involved are we? Are we involved enough in the things of God? You say, well, Preacher, I... I want my children to be well-rounded, and I don't want them to come out, you know, uh, and grow up and resent me for not letting them do stuff. And resent. You know what they're going to resent you for? They're going to resent you if they die and go to hell. Right, yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's good. They're going to resent you if all you cared about was reliving your life through their life, and you didn't let them have a life in Christ. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm just asking, are you involved enough? Hmm. I do believe Matthew 6.33 is still in the Bible. Yeah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all the other things. You know the best way to raise your children? By the Bible. Yeah. How's your service? Are you involved enough? How's our service? Are we impactful? Are we impacting anybody's lives? Because if we're not impacting anybody's lives, let's lock the doors and go to the house. Hmm? But how about you personally? Are you impacting anybody's life around you? Hmm? How's our service? You see, inside these doors, this is worship. This isn't service. Service happens outside these doors. Hmm? I wonder about this. Our we insightful in our service that simply means are we compassionate are we tender 
are we discernible? Are we insightful? Or do we have an awareness about folks in our service for the Lord? i tell you what the devil's done to us. He's made us so busy we don't even see people, let alone have any insight as how we can be used of the Lord to impact somebody's life. Christians are one of two things in this day and age. We're too busy or we got our head buried in the sand. We don't want to know what's going on in the world, so we just bury our head in the sand. God help us. I got one more point because some of you are about to pass out, so I'm going to get this thing over. Uh, wake up, Ed! Anyway, thought I'd throw that in. I'm just quoting Glendale on that. We need to prioritize this year our time. We need to place a lot of emphasis on sinners and on our standing with God and on our service. But lastly, there needs to be a lot of emphasis on how short a time we really have. If Jesus said he must work the works that the Lord had for him to work while it was daytime, for the nighttime cometh when no man can work. If the Lord was conscientious of that, we too should be conscientious that our time to work is short. Do you know the Apostle Paul, as God was using him to pin down the Bible, thought he was living in the day the Lord was coming back? Do you know every generation since then thought the Lord was coming back in their time? The only difference is the Bible hadn't been fulfilled in any generation to ours. My dear friends, he's coming back, and he's coming back soon. I wonder, are we conscientious of how short the time we really have? Do you, do you understand that the Bible says in the last days they'd be deceiving and being deceived? Do you realize how much deception is in this world? It is so scary. There's so much deception in, in society, but there's also so much deception in Christianity. Churches that once stood for the Bible today are deceiving people. They are doing away with the old-time way in order to get young people and to get a crowd. Yeah. Miss Annette streams from her phone to, uh, to the TV in the mornings and and this morning she had uh, the Lindsay family singing on there and we was enjoying that and everything. All of a sudden there was a song, you know, this is the beauty of, you know, iHeartRadio. They throw in their deals and all that. But there was a video came up of that song that, that Miss Renee sings, that song that we love so much, The Goodness of God. And so much truth in that song and, and you can worship in that song. And that song comes up but it's in a concert setting. And Brother Bob, I don't know how many thousands of people are there. And this lady's singing that song. And I'm watching the people. And they've been deceived by false religion. And I asked Annette, I said, I wonder how they'd react if a preacher got up and preached truth. I said, would they all be washing windows? Channeling in and whatever they do? No. You know what they'd do? They'd stone the preacher. Because he's upsetting their little deal. Because they didn't come out to truly worship. They came out to have their ears tickled and to be made to feel better about their lives. You see, there was no change in their so-called salvation. And that's the deception of this world. If Jesus ch saves you, he changes you. If you have an experience that you call salvation and you go back to the vomit that supposedly he delivered you from, my dear friends, you did not have salvation. Do you know this morning that Crossroads did not have church? Do you know why they did not have church? Because most of the people that go to their church was out getting drunk last yeah. night. So they did not want them to have to worry about having a hangover and coming to church. Well, I've got news for you. I never worry about having a hangover and coming to church. Uh, I get drunk, but I get drunk on the Holy Ghost. I don't get drunk on the filth of this world because uh, Jesus changed my life. Uh, but there's so much deception out there. Those people think they're going to heaven. 
They've been lied to. That's why you and I need to go after them. You and I need to let our light shine. Let them know the truth about what's going on. You say, well, they don't like the way we worship. If they, if they get to know Jesus, they'll like the way we worship. There's so much deception. Can I say we have a short time? How do you know, preacher? Because the devil's on the prowl. There is so much wickedness going on in this world. You see it on the television set. You see it in society. You, see, you, you hear it on the radio. You can't go anywhere that you don't feel inundated with the ideology of the devil. Do you know what the philosophy of Satan is? My right to my claim to myself. Selfishness is the essence of sin. That is the doctrine of Satan. And can I say, everywhere in society you find selfishness. We have bred a generation who believes that they can live however they want to and get away with it. You don't have any right to say anything about it. It doesn't matter what law enforcement says. It doesn't matter what the Constitution says. It doesn't matter what the Bible says. If it feels good, do it. That's the philosophy of Satan, and that's what's coming up in America. The devil's on the prowl. I don't know if you know Kirk Cameron. He's an actor. Does a lot of Christian movies. Wrote a book. Libraries all across the country pulled it from their shelves because in that book he makes it clear that God made man and woman. In that book, he makes it clear the stand of God on marriage, on, on gender, all those things. They pulled it. But yet, throughout the country, they're letting drag queens bring sex toys in to kindergartners and first graders and saying that's normal. It's not normal. The devil's on the prowl. And very few are standing up to oppose him. I did see where yesterday a, a library in Kansas City allowed his book to not only be on the shelves, they had him come and read a segment of the book, and they said the lines were outside that place like crazy. I said, hallelujah. Now, he doesn't believe everything in the Bible the way we believe it, but thank God he's making a stand. Uh, but the devil's on the prowl. Our time is short. Can I say this? The day of the Lord's at hand. Our time is short. We need to prioritize our time. Uh, folks around you know you go to church. They ought to see a real Christian. They ought to see somebody who really loves Jesus. They ought to see somebody who's not ashamed of Jesus. They ought to see the Bible being unfolded right before their eyes. Do you realize that you are the only Bible some sinners will ever read? The Bible says we're written epistles known and read of all men. We ought to let them see Jesus high and lifted up. Miss Annette asked me, what's the theme going to be for camp meeting? I said, making much of Jesus. That ought to be our theme for our life. We ought to make much of Jesus every day in our life. I wonder, you right with the Lord? We may not have Wednesday night service. We might be in heaven. Will you be there with us? Amen. Huh? You say, are you, you setting a date? No, no, I know better than that. The Bible said no man knows the day or the hour. All I know is he's coming. And he could come today. But we might not even have service tonight because we're in heaven. You're right with the Lord. You're ready to meet him. Do you know him? Well, I'd, I'd make him my priority. Not only today, but every day. And when he comes, you'll not be ashamed. You'll be glad to see him. I wonder, what's the priorities of your life? Well, last year I did. Well, last year's gone, friend. And you don't really know if you got tomorrow. So why don't you put Jesus first now, and every day He blesses you with from hereafter. He ought to be the main thing in our life. Let's all stand, brother Clint. Come and get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. If you don't know the Lord, we invite you to come. We'd love to get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. If you're not right with the Lord, I'd get right with Him. He's coming. I'd certainly want my mind to be on Him. He's coming. 
folks are all over the altar, but there's room for you, friend. And if he spoke to you about any manner, you just mind the Lord. Get the song ready. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for another opportunity to worship you. Thank you for truth in a world full of deceit. God, help us. Lord, I pray you'd insulate our minds and our hearts and help us to strive to put you first. God, we pray your will be done in the heart of everyone in attendance this morning. Father, those you're speaking to, I pray that, Lord, they just be obedient to the voice of the Lord. These in the altar, for whatever reason they're here, God, bless them, help them, strengthen them. God, do great things for them these days that you've blessed us with. And God, we do pray if there's any amongst us unsaved, lost without God, I pray today to be the day of their salvation. Bless now. Have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.